Okay, we have assumed the position. If you are a longtime watcher of this channel, you should kind of have an idea. Well, besides for the fact that you read the title of the video today, so you already know. But if you are a longtime watcher of this channel and you kind of see me in my white chair in this spot, you should kind of assume you're in for a long one. That probably could have been, could have been phrased better because my inner Michael Scott is like fighting to come out, but I'll be an adult. <laughs> Hey guys, we are back with another one, and we are back with yet another haul. Now, I know I said in my last haul, and I'm going to kind of reiterate today, that I've been trying to prioritize Kindle like ebooks because I am uh, quickly running out of space on my, what, 30 shelves? 28 shelves. And I've been telling you guys about the saga of the custom bookshelf that I had being built and we have run into yet more hiccups, but it is completely done and it is organized. I am not ready to film a bookshelf tour yet, but is it exactly the way I wanted it to be? It's really not. It's not. However, when I do do my little bookshelf tour, you're going to see that it's in a really awkward like cubby hole underneath our stairs. And the awkward space that it had to fit in ended up causing some problems on top of the fact that like it's not completely square like we thought it was. So that caused some problems, but it does look great. I really, really am happy and pleased with the way that it turned out. Is it perfection? No, but it's perfectly fine for a little nook under the stairs. So I will be doing a bookshelf tour bookshelf tour soon. However, it will not be today. Today we will be talking about the books that I hauled, and although I was prioritizing Kindle books, I did actually do some damage on physical books. <laughs> I also did damage on Kindle books, but I also have quite a few physical books to talk to you guys about. I have two stacks of like one, two, three, four, five, six, like 10 to 12 each. So without further ado, let's get right into it because we're going to be here for a while. Okay, first up, I grabbed the Barnes & Noble edition of Hexed by Emily McIntyre. This is book number six in the Never After series, I believe it's called. Yeah, a Never After novel. In the Never After series, I believe, just based on the cover and also little things that I've heard, this is going to be a story between an Ursula-inspired character and a Prince Eric-inspired character from Little Mermaid. If you haven't read the Never After series, I've read the first one, which is Hooked obviously Peter Pan inspired. Um, it's about the main characters being the villains and like reimagining and reshaping fairy tales. And this is the Little Mermaid installation. I'm purposely not going to read the back because I, I like going into these books not knowing too much. But they're basically described, I believe Emily McIntyre describes them herself as fractured fairy tale reimaginings. And I really liked Hooked. So I definitely wanted to make sure that I got Hexed, which this is the longest, like the thickest installation yet. And I also think this might be my favorite cover. So next up, I grabbed Throne of Secrets. This is the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition after this is the second book after Throne of the Fallen, which follows up the Kingdom of the Wicked series. I have only read the first book in the Kingdom of the Wicked series, but I've heard that one's a bit more YA and Throne of the Fallen and Throne of Secrets gets a bit more adult. I just wanted my editions to match and I do have the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition of Throne of the Fallen. So wanted to make sure I prioritized grabbing the second book. Stickers on books are the bane of my existence. Why? Why? At least Barnes & Noble has the, the common decency to make them like easily removable stickers where you just do this and they peel right off. Target, on the other hand, not so much. And I always feel like I'm going to tear the paper back when I'm removing the stickers. So. Oh. It is kind of satisfying though, removing it. Next up, do I have these on my Kindle? Yes. Will I most likely end up reading them on my Kindle? Yes. Is there any reasonable excuse other than the fact that I think the covers are really cute for me to also own physical copies? No. 
But Target was having a buy two, get one free sale. And I said, well, clearly there's nothing else for me to do other than purchase books. So I picked up the Pumpkin Spice Cafe and the Cinnamon Bun Bookstore by Lori Gilmore. Um, like I said, I do have these on my Kindle and that's probably where I'll be reading them. But how freaking cute are these little covers with like the uh, gold leafing and the embossing. I love these covers and I have a weird feeling I'm gonna love this series because it is loosely Gilmore Girls, like spicy Gilmore Girls coded. And Gilmore Girls is my favorite show of all time. So I don't know that Lori Gilmore could do any wrong with these books. I also grabbed The Au Pair Affair by Tessa Bailey in the same, same sale. And I have a complicated relationship with Miss Tessa Bailey because I started my Tessa Bailey journey reading what happened one summer, happened one summer, and Hook, Line, and Sinker, and I loved that series. So I, of course, made the natural assumption that I was going to love everything Tessa Bailey did, and now, just out of habit, I grab everything she writes. I jumped into the Make Me series right here, and really didn't like it. I thought it was cheesy and corny to the point of cringy and embarrassing. And I'm kind of sensing, based on some of the other things I've seen about her books, that what happened one summer or it happened one summer and Hook, Line, and Sinker might have been an outlier and they were just really, really good. And we're still a little bit cheesy and cringy, but not too much and not too over the top. I think her style of writing is closer to the Make Me series in the over-the-top slapstick, dumb female character falling all over herself cringy. Like, I think that's kind of her shtick. And I'm hoping I'm wrong, because if I read another book by her and I'm still not, like, connecting to her female main characters and to her writing, I don't know if Tissa Bailey is going to continue to be a purchase author for me. But this is the All Pair Affair. This is her newer one. It says it's an all new sports rom com about a burly, surly single dad who falls head over hockey stick for his quirky live in nanny. So, hockey romance, live in nanny trope. It sounds good. Let's hope it lives up to it. Okay, I'm gonna stop removing the stickers. I should have done that before I started recording, but full disclosure, I kind of forgot that Target loves to put stickers on literally everything for no apparent reason. So I'll remove them after, ignore the stickers, they're ugly. I get it, but I wish I owned Target. I would stop the practice altogether. However, not quite rolling in just enough funds to purchase Target yet, so these stickers will continue. However, I also grabbed Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, and you go, why? You clearly have 2,000 editions of this book because it's your favorite thing ever and you love everything about Harry Potter, right? So why did you buy it? I did not go in planning to purchase this book. I saw it on the new releases shelf and I went, new releases? I got this when I was like 11. How is this a new release? Are, are we serious? Uh, I'm sorry, what? Are we kidding? They are republishing Harry Potter with sprayed edges and the golden snitch is on the edges. How do you expect me to walk out of the store without purchasing? So I already see the writing on the wall. If they did the Sorcerer's Stone, the Philosopher's Stone, if you're across the pond, if they did the Sorcerer's Stone, that means they're republishing the entire series with sprayed edges, which means I'm going to purchase every single one of them. And I'm going to own my like sixth full copy release of Harry Potter. And it is going to be the greatest thing I've ever purchased. I will regret nothing. Next up, I grabbed The Fiance Dilemma by Elena Armas. Have I ever read anything by Elena Armas? No. Do I own everything she's ever written? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. I do. Yet another author that I just auto buy for some reason. I don't even know if I like her writing. But this is her newer book as well. And it says... Is the fifth time the charm? Josie Moore has given the opposite sex and love plenty of chances. Four exactly if you count all her failed engagements, and five if you include her no longer absentee father. Nonetheless, when the business tycoon decides to announce his retirement with a splashy magazine piece, and Josie learns that her romantic history isn't great PR for the family, she jumps at the chance to offer a solution. Matthew Flanagan is in the mud, literally. Not only has he been fired from his job, but after taking a wrong turn on his way to Green Oak, North Carolina, his car is stuck. Oh, it's the my car is stuck trope. This is very um, like Abby Jimenez, like part of my world coded. So he grabs a duffel bag with his essentials and goes in search of a place to crash until he gets his life and vehicle back on track. But instead, he stumbled upon his best friend's sister, Josie, greeting him as her fiance. 
So it's going to be like a fake fiance engagement of convenience, like engagement of job convenience trope. I hope I really end up liking it because I own quite a few of her books. I also grabbed Spark of the Everflame by Penn Cole. So I do, of course, this is Kindle Unlimited. I probably will end up reading it on my Kindle. However, they are traditionally publishing this and they are in hardcover. And I want to make sure that I get all of the editions in the matching hardcovers. So I grabbed it while I could, while it was buy two, get one free. And actually, it's a really pretty cover. I don't know if it has anything. Oh, it does have some, like, well, kind of underwhelming artwork but artwork nonetheless. And it does have a very pretty, in what is this, engraved inset, inset cover? I don't know if you could see that, but inset cover. So I don't really regret it, and I want to own it in the hardcover. I don't know what this is about. It says, you think I fear my own death, he whispered in my ear. Every day I draw breath is as much a curse as a gift. If you're the way my fate finally catches up to me, I can't fathom a more beautiful end. This is romanticy. I've heard it's extreme slow burn. I've heard that the first like one or two books are pretty slow, but the series continues to get even better. I've also heard the main female character, I believe her name is DM, is relatively infuriating, and a lot of people actually don't care for her. So I'm excited to see what my opinion is on this because it's kind of become viral on Bookstagram. I also grabbed Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. This has also been taking Bookstagram kind of by storm, even though I believe it was published quite a bit ago. And I think it is sad. I've heard so many good things about Frederick Bachman's writing, and I've been intrigued by his writing. I just kind of didn't know where to start. And I, from everything that I've seen, I think Bear Town is a good place to start. But like, comment below if you suggest starting with another Bachman book, because I've heard his writing is absolutely incredible. It says, it's only a game. It only resolves tiny, insignificant things, such as who gets validation, who gets listened to. It allocates power and draws boundaries and turns some people into stars and others into spectators. That's all. A tiny community deep in the forest, Beartown hasn't been the best at anything in a long time. But down by the lake stands an old ice rink. And in that old ice rink, Kevin, Amat, Benji, and the rest of the town's junior ice hockey team are about to compete in the national semifinals. And they actually have a shot at winning. All the hopes and dreams of this place now rest on the shoulders of a handful of teenage boys. Under that heavy burden, the semifinal match becomes the catalyst for a violent act that will leave a young girl traumatized in a town in turmoil. This is a story about a town and a game, but even more about loyalty, commitment, and the responsibility of friendship, the people we disappoint even though we love them, and the decisions we make every day that come to define us. In the story of a small forest town, Frederick Botman has found the entire world. Just that synopsis is beautifully and lyrically written, so I cannot wait to see if that beautiful lyrical writing style continues into the meat and potatoes of the book. Next up, I grabbed another book that I've actually already read, but it's being traditionally published and I want to make sure my copies match. And that is the book one, The Awakening of the Zodiac Academy by the Twisted Sisters, Caroline Peckham and Susan Valenti. I am going to be honest with you, I'm actually thinking I'm going to reread this because I read this on my Kindle on vacation in Disney with my kids by the pool. And I could not focus. There were a million and one distractions while I was reading this book. And while I did finish it, and I remember actually really enjoying it, as I think back now, I don't remember really 95% of what happened. And I want to get into this series. So I think it would benefit from a reread of book one before I move on. Because I remember it's a dark magical academia setting and there's a lot of characters and a lot to know. From what I do remember, it's about two twin sisters who are orphans who find out that they have been raised in the human world despite having magical, I believe like fey abilities. And they are actually brought to this dark academia to try to learn more about their powers. And when they get there, they find out that their parents before they were murdered, I believe, were some sort of royalty or nobility in this world. And while they haven't been there to take the throne, that's rightfully theirs. These sons of noblemen or sons of noble people started ruling their land and now obviously they're not very happy that the girls are back because they could potentially or are about to lose their power. So the first one I do believe was a dark academia like bully romance between the girls and the the boys I guess. I don't know but I do want to reread this and this is a beautifully floppy traditionally published edition. So Zodiac Academy here I come.
While I was at the store picking up the Zodiac Academy, I also grabbed the Twisted Sisters new release, which is Never Keep. It's going to be a while until I get to this, but once again, I wanted to make sure I got the new release hardcover. So this is, once again, by Carolyn Peckham and Suzanne Valenti. And I think, does this have to do with, yes, it is. It does have something to do and is interconnected, I think, with the Zodiac Academy. It says, Fate Doesn't Favor the Wicker, Wicked, a Dark Enemies to Lovers Romanticy series. So maybe not. But it says, the dragons are lost, the elements are at war, enlisting isn't optional, and I'm falling for a man who wants me dead. Dragons? Enemies to lovers? Wartime? I'll kill you energy? And it's Twisted Sisters. Bring it on. Next up is the book I am 100% the most excited to talk about because it was a gift from one of you guys from my Amazon wish list. Just shameless plug, my Amazon wish list is always public and it's always posted in the description down below and that is not to say like go get me stuff, it's because I like doing a little like book exchange with you guys. So whenever any of you get me a book, I always make sure to ask for you to send me your wish list so that I could reciprocate as well. So once again, this is a reminder. Danielle, I think think you might have, I don't actually think you did send it to me. If you didn't, send it to me. Um, if any of you send me a book, please make sure you also message me or respond to my Instagram post when it's received, if you don't want to spoil the surprise, and link me your Amazon wish list so that I could send a book back to you, because this is the whole point of this. You share with me a book you think I might like, and I want to send you back one that you want as well. So without further ado, Miss Danielle from Bark and Read, thank you so much for gifting me Nightshade by Carrie Lake. I am so excited about this because Carrie Lake is an author that I am the most excited to kind of dive into her world. I have heard such amazing things. I know right now she's getting a lot of acclaim for like Noctacadia and Erythema, Erythema, I think is how you pronounce it. But this is her series that predates those. And this is Nightshade. I got this book with this adorable little letter from Danielle. And it says, I always keep all of your letters in <laughs> inside the book when you send them to me. So it says, I'm so glad I found you on YouTube. Your videos bring me so much joy. Wow. You bring me so much joy. Maybe one day we can meet up at Disney for some trash can table time. I would love that. Yes. Yes, let's meet up at Disney. I think we should do like a like a booked and busy, like homey and homely Disney meetup, right? Like, God, I wish we could do that. That would be amazing. What if we did like a weekend where we just rode around the pool and rode rides? That would be so much fun. But anyways, I digress. Thank you so much, Danielle. This says, my father called them messengers. He once told me they walked among us and that somewhere in this dark and godless city, there shined a faint sliver of hope. I had only to look for the signs. Well, I've spent my whole life investigating the inexplicable and all I've found are the unsettling vestiges of iniquity, the evidence of another world shrouded by the obscure, purgatory to some where depravity hides in shadows and girls like me are little more than delicious bites of temptation. Others call it nightshade. This peculiar place is where I first met the cold and callous recluse living in a decaying cliffside cathedral. Jericho Van Quarry is the epitome of everything I've been told to fear. A raven-winged harbinger. Is it harbinger or harbinger? 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 I don't know who wears intrigue like a warm black cloak, an enigma that I'm determined to unravel, even if it means getting closer than I should. Our t one touch is forbidden, even so much as a kiss would be my demise, but the sin on his lips burns me up like a wild flame, and his growing infatuation weakens my resolve. Giving him what he wants, though, will mean no chance for redemption or escape. What's worse is the signs I've followed, yet failed to see all these years, begin to unmask a terrifying reality, that falling may be my only saving grace." dark romance. Bring it on. Thank you, Danielle. You know me so well. Okay, now let's get into the special editions I've received this month, and I have a little bit of an announcement to make. I did something semi-impulsive this month and canceled like 90% of my book boxes. I was spending 300 something like dollars a month on book services and it's not that I don't love them I do but the problem is my special edition books have mostly been display I didn't really want to read them because I didn't want to crinkle them and I don't know why but I sat down with my friend who came to visit we had like a reading night and I sat down with my friend and we got to talking about this and I was like I don't really know why I don't read my books that's what they're there for. And I'm never like, I'm never going to resell them. They're always going to be mine. So what do I care? Like I should enjoy them. And then I was thinking to myself, I have literally an entire bookshelf of special editions to read. I have 
1500 books on my Kindle, do I really need to be shelling out $300 a month to get more when I have to catch up on these. So was it like a shade to the book box service or anything? No, I love them. They're gorgeous. They're, they're probably some of my favorite things. However, in the interest of staying realistic and remembering what's important and trying not to be too excessive with my shelves being full, which I am excessive, I said, you know what, I'm going to take a break. And once I've pared down a little bit or once I've decided that it was really worth it, I could always rejoin and get on the waiting list and start again. It's not a problem. But in the meantime, I did remain a part of Page and Wick and the Fairy Loot Romanticy box because those are bangers literally every, well, Page and Wick is bi-monthly, but those boxes are bangers every single time. I've never skipped and I never plan on it. So if you are looking for my recommendations, if you're like, I can only do one or two subscription boxes, which one to choose? Because it can be overwhelming. I canceled everything except for Page and Wick and the fairy loot romanticy. So those would be my suggestions. Those were the ones that even after thinking about it, I just couldn't let go of. So this was the fairy loot romanticy book for this month. And that was the coven by Harper L. Woods. This edition is so pretty. I'm literally loving like the skull and bones of this. It says for those who love them villainous. Let me show you the inner artwork. I'm going to do these quick. Oh my god. Okay, so on the reverse dust jacket, it just has like the traditionally published cover. So nothing too special there. But look at this naked card cover. Are you freaking serious? Oh my god, that is stunning. And then of course, it has the gorgeous character art on the inside with the embossed pages beautiful. I'm assuming our main male and female character, of course, signed by the author. This is, as the name suggests, a coven book. So witches and witchcraft. I've actually talked about this before, so I'm not going to get too far into it. I have the other special editions from Barnes and Noble, but I am so excited to get into this and I'm hoping it's super spicy. Okay, so next up, this should not shock you because I have several copies of this book and I've actually shown this one before. This first book is not new, but there's a reason I'm showing it. I don't know if you remember this, but I have shown this before. I did get the bookish box of House of Beating Wings by Olivia Wildenstein. This is a Crow Shifter romanticy series. I did get this quite a bit ago. Well, what I didn't necessarily tell you about this is that at the same time, there was a pre-order for books two and three. And if you've never ordered from bookish box before, it is not unrealistic to think that you'll wait like close to a year to get your special editions. So I did get the second and third book in the House of Beating Wings series. So I got House of Pounding Hearts. This is book two from Bookish Box. I haven't even actually looked at this yet. How crazy is that? Oh, it's beautiful. And that artwork, excuse me, what? I keep saying that I want to read this series. Oh my god. Th these colors are so vibrant. I hope it's showing up on camera, but how beautiful is that? And this is exactly why. Look at these naked hardcovers. Until I met you, little bird, I was merely living. I was not alive. Wow. With the reverse dust jacket. Oh my gosh. These are beautiful additions. I believe there's going to be six books, I think, in this series. So I'm sure they're going to roll out another pre-order for books, what, four, five, six, something like that. So I will be getting those as well. But this is the third book, House of Striking Oaths. How gorgeous is that? Wow. What does this one say? I was always yours, but now you are only mine. Let's see. Oh my god. These are so beautiful. Look at that. I'm intrigued. It's a crow shifter series, but all of the um, interior artwork is under the water. So I'm trying to figure out what's going to happen under the water, but... It's absolutely stunningly beautiful. I'm so glad I got these. You wait forever, but it's worth the wait. Oh my gosh, look at this one. <gasps> oh, beautiful, stunning, gorgeous. Oh, it says my home, my heart. That's cute. Maybe I do have to prioritize this. Um, House of, what is it? House of Beating Wings and this whole series is Kindle Unlimited. So you don't have to get special editions, but look at those sprayed edges together so pretty worth the wait worth the money so i got those next up was my last illumicrate box which is crazy to say but honestly i've been skipping like 
uh, Lumicrate has unlimited skips, I believe, and I think I've skipped, like, eight out of the last ten boxes or something, so it was just kind of pointless. I'm just not loving the books that they're picking, or I'm not super intrigued by the books that they're picking, but I did grab Until We Shatter by Kate Dillon. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I'm not upset I got this, but I forgot to skip. I, I don't know if I necessarily would have, because I am intrigued by it. I certainly will read it, but... Is this something I'm super excited about? I don't think I am. It was just kind of one of the books where I read the synopsis and I was like, mm, okay. But I have heard really good things about her writing, so I'm happy I got it. It says, twists and turn that will leave you reeling, a desperate thief, an impossible heist, survive or shatter. So I guess this is a heist book? I don't know. I haven't even looked at it yet. <gasps> Illumicrate's books are super gorgeous though. Look at this naked hardcover. I'm not regretting canceling. I know I made the right decision, but like then you see gorgeous books like this and you're kind of like, oh, they really are quite beautiful. Look at that. Oh, is this going to be a reverse Hera? Hmm. No, maybe just friends, but they are beautiful. Gorgeous. All right, let's read the inside cover and see what this is about. It says, no matter where she goes, Kemi's, Semi's life is under threat. The church would see her killed for having any magic. The Council of Shades wants her dead for not having enough. So when her mother falls ill, Kemi, Semi, C-E-M-M-Y, has no choice but to return thief. And when she's offered a job that could solve all their problems, it's impossible to resist. The catch, Semi will have to work with Chase, beautiful, dangerous, and full of secrets, to steal a powerful relic the church has hidden within a deadly realm of shadows. If she succeeds, Semi will finally be safe, but if she's caught, she risks igniting a spark that could destroy the city and everyone inside. It says it's an action-packed, epic heist fantasy from the author of The Mind Walker, perfect for fans of Six of Crows, Master of One, and Bone Crier's Dawn. So maybe I will end up loving this. Next up is a book that I am so excited to read, and that is the Fairy Loot edition of Air by Saba Tahir. I am so excited to read this book, and this edition is stunningly gorgeous. I hope the camera is picking up how beautiful these editions are, because they really are. This is kind of a chunker of a book, though. Look at the inside pages heavy. I'm like shaking holding this thing up. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. This is the traditional cover on the back of the reverse dust jacket, but absolutely stunningly beautiful. And I have heard amazing things about this book. It says an orphan, an outcast, a prince, and a killer who will bring an empire to its knees. And then on the back cover, it says Love, Legacy, Power, Vengeance. So I'm assuming this is going to be like a Battle for a Kingdom romanticy. I could not for the life of me remember if I showed you guys this, but I did get this one probably about a month ago. And that is When the Moon Hatched by Sarah A. Parker. This is from Fairy Loot, and it, was, it wasn't a part of the subscription. It was like an extra like pre-order purchase, which of course I did because it is stunningly gorgeous. Look at this edition. This is another really big book, but this edition is stunningly beautiful, and I am so excited to get into Sarah A. Parker's um, books. It's weird. It doesn't have a reverse dust jacket. That's a little odd, but I am so excited to get into her works because I have heard um, not only When the Moon Hatched, but also To Bleed a Crystal Bloom is excellent, so I wanted to make sure that I got that. I do have To Bleed a Crystal Bloom in the special editions as well. Look at how pretty. So... I don't want to know a ton of what this is about, but I think this is a, something to do with like the cycles of the moon and it has dragons and it's something, I don't know. I really don't know. I thought it was about something and then I talked about it in another video and I read the inside cover and found out that I was like completely wrong and apparently just made up what I thought this was about. So I'm not going to read it again, but I've heard great things about this book. Last three before we go to Kindle. Okay, the next book I got was from Fairy Lou, and it's The Half King by Melissa Landers. This is Romanticy, of course. I forget whether this, I think this was an adult box that this came in. It's quite pretty, and it does, oh wow, this is beautiful artwork. Sometimes the artwork makes me more excited for the book. Look at this naked hardcover. Gorgeous. And then, look at this artwork beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That right there somehow makes me more excited to read it. Let's see what's in the back. Usually they like to do like main female character on, yep, that's exactly what it is. Main female character on the front cover, main male character on the back. That's also absolutely stunning. 
gorgeous, beautiful. No reverse dust jacket again, but it says, in a world where birth order determines your fate, what if everything you believed about yourself was a lie? Like all second-born daughters of the realm, Cerise Solon has never ventured beyond the temple grounds where she lives in service to the goddess. But unlike her peers, Cerise is a complete failure as an oracle. Her inability to foretell a single tragedy has brought shame upon her family, something she sees reflected in their eyes during their rare visits. Everything changes when the head seer offers Cerise an opportunity to serve the half-king, a young man who's rules by day and turns to shadow at sunset. As a firstborn son, the king bears his bloodline's curse and is destined to vanish completely upon his 21st birthday. Wow. Harsh. While searching for a way to restore him, Cerise finds a kindred spirit in the mysterious young ruler and with his help discovers a startling revelation about herself that unlocks a powerful set of gifts. But the truth comes with a price, for she is no oracle, but instead the product of a union so forbidden its discovery would sentence her to death. Despite her tainted origins, Cerise might be the key to restoring order to the land and saving the man she's quickly growing to love if she can outlive those sworn to destroy her. It sounds very, very good. Next up was a pre-order that I did special order, and that is from Fairy Lou. It's Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. I believe this is a movie. If I remember hearing somebody talk about it, it is a movie. I don't know really anything about it, but this edition is absolutely stunning. There are other books in the series, so I'm assuming there's going to be more. Look at this reverse dust jacket. I love the colors on this book, like very pastel and the naked hardcover. Really, really beautiful. I, is this about like a castle that can move? Something like that. It's a children's book originally published in 1973. Interesting. I don't want to know too much about this because I know it's really beloved, but it says, in the land of Ingari, where seven seven league boots and cloaks of invisibility really exist, Sophie Hatter attracts the unwelcome attention of the Witch of the Waste, who puts a curse on her. Determined to make the best of things, Sophie travels to the one place where she might get help, the Moving Castle, which hovers on the nearby hills. But the castle belongs to the dreaded wizard Howell, whose appetite, they say, is satisfied only by the hearts of young girls. Sounds really, really cute and beautiful edition. Last but not least for special editions, I did pick up The Wren and the Holly Library by K.A. Lind. This is a Beauty and the Beast reimagining, retelling, I believe, so I'm not going to read the um, synopsis, but I will read the back. It's an enthralling dark fantasy romance inspired by Beauty and the Beast where monsters live among humankind and ancient secrets threaten to destroy everything. And I just thought this edition was quite beautiful. It does feel a bit dark and gothic on the inside as well with the beautiful naked hardcover. That is gorgeous, the printed hardcover. So I wanted to grab it. Let's see what's on the back, actually. Oh, it's more. Oh, wow, that's really pretty. So I did love the artwork. Definitely wanted to pick it up. Okay, so as always, I'm not going to talk about every single Kindle purchase I made because some of them are just kind of silly, but I'm really going to go through very quickly what books I got. So actually, let's start with the books that I picked up today because they're probably still on special. So today I grabbed The Spectacular by Fiona Davis. I saw Ashlyn read this book and enjoy it. I think Haley might have read it as well, and I believe enjoyed it. I don't know really what it's about, but it says... It's a thrilling story about love, sacrifice, and the pursuit of dreams set amidst the glamour and glitz of Radio City Music Hall in mid-century heyday. I think this is like a historical fiction. And it was on sale for $1.99 today, so it was a good purchase. Also on sale today was Royal Blood by Amy Carter. I've been kind of eyeing this book for a while and it's on sale for $1.99. I'm telling you this because you should go look because sometimes a lot of these specials last longer than a day. So there's a chance that any of these might still be on sale if they sound good. This one is called Royal Blood. It says royalty, murder, and scandal combine in this thrilling new series about an American girl who becomes the British monarchy's greatest nightmare. Next up, I grabbed One of Us is Dead by Geneva Rose. This is on sale for $1.99 as well. I've actually heard not fantastic things about this book. I think some people actually really hate it, but it says The Real Housewives Meets Murder in this deliciously savage and wildly entertaining thriller. It says Buckhead isn't a place you live, it's a place you survive, and that applies even to the wealthy housewives that have it all. Fancy cars, designer clothes, and daily salon appointments aren't nearly enough to keep them fulfilled and happy because in this town, privilege and opulence go hand in hand with betrayal and revenge. Jenny, the owner of Glow, an exclusive membership-only beauty salon, knows that better than anyone because she knows everything about these housewives, down to each individual strand of hair. Despite the toxicity, Jenny keeps her focus on running her business and keeping the peace. However, peace proves to be impossible when one of her clients is murdered. Now it's up to Jenny and her knowledge of neighborhood secrets and gossip to help the police solve the case. It won't be easy, though 
though because while Buckhead may be all about appearances nothing is as it seems. It's so funny because why is that so true? Why do we tell our hairdressers our barbers everything? Also on sale for $2.99, I grabbed Earthlings by Sayaka Murata. This is an otherworldly coming-of-age tale of a woman who believes she is an alien. Interesting. <laughs> on sale for $0.99, cents, I grabbed Doing Time by Jodi Taylor. This says it's a hilarious new spinoff from the Chronicles of St. Mary's series, which I actually believe later on in this. I think I did grab at least one of the books in the St. Mary series, I believe. Jodi Taylor does cozy murder mysteries, like kind of like cozy Agatha Christie style murder mysteries. And I actually saw one of my friends like binging the St. Mary's Chronicle series, so it intrigued me. It says, a long time ago in the future, the secret of time travel became known to all. Unsurprisingly, the world nearly ended. There will always be idiots who want to change history. Amen. Enter the Time Police, an all-powerful international organization tasked with keeping the timeline straight at all costs. Their success is legendary. The time wars are over, but now they must fight to save a very different future, their own. This is the story of Jane, Luke, and Matthew, the worst recruits in Time Police history, or very possibly three young people who mo might change everything. Super cute. For 99 cents, can't go wrong. Oh, this next book was on sale for $1.99. I don't believe it is anymore, but I have spotted this book for so long. This is Frog Kisser by Garth Nix. I think this is like a super silly middle grade like fairy tale adjacent story. It says, poor Princess Anya, stuck living with her evil stepmother's new husband, her evil stepfather, plagued with an unfortunate ability to break curses with a magic assisted kiss and forced to go on the run when her step stepfather, step stepfather, <laughs> decides to make the kingdom entirely his own. Aided by a loyal talking dog, a boy thief trapped in the body of a new and some extraordinary mischievous wizards, Anya sets off on a quest that, if she plays it right, will ultimately free her land and teach her a thing or two about the use of power, the effectiveness of a well-placed pucker, and the finding of friends in places both high and low. Like I said, I've seen this book a couple of times. I've kind of like dismissed it a little bit, but I saw it on sale for $1.99 and I was like, now's the time. I also grabbed Wolf Girl by Leia Stone. This is on sale for $2.99. And it says, when my parents were banished from Wolf City before I was born, I thought there was no way I could ever live in a pack again. Cuffed with my shifter magic bound, I was forced to go to school with witches and vampires in order to keep my true nature from coming out. Then I met him, Sawyer Hudson, who is the Alpha's son. So this is a little bit of Omegaverse action. Next up, I grabbed The Counselors by Jessica Goodman. This is on sale for $1.99, and it says it's a thriller about three best friends, one elite summer camp, and the dark secrets that lead to a body in the lake. I am not a gigantic YA mystery thriller person, but one kind of trope or theme that I like or that kind of makes me like things a little bit more is a summer camp for some reason. I don't know why. I just find it so niche, and I love it. So I think this could be a hit. I also grabbed The Match and The Enemy by Sarah Adams. This was a book I think that predates When in Rome. I don't know much about it and I'm not going to read it, but they were both on sale for like $2, $2.99, something like that. So I picked up both of them. Okay, and be, I always tell you guys to watch the daily specials, and this is a classic example of why. I grabbed The Last Raven by Helen Glynn Jones. This book just released on October 31st, so like, what, two weeks ago? And it's already on a Kindle daily deal for $2.99. So sometimes you get, like, popular new releases. My battery's gonna die. Hold on one second. Battery pack is switched out. Crisis avoided. Okay, so like I was saying, this is an adult romanticy that just released, and at least at the time of filming, this is still on sale for $2.99. It says it's a forced proximity forbidden romance vampire story. It says, I'll be forced to take the crown simply because of who my parents are. Never mind that my skin, my eyes, the way I move, everything will give me away for what I am, human, in a world ruled by vampires. As sole heir to the House of Raven, there is nothing Amelia can't have. The only problem is she doesn't want it. But when the mysterious Kyle enters her closed-off existence, she sees a way out. As rebellion and dark forces swirl around her, Amelia has a choice to make. Leave everyone she loves behind or stay and accept her destiny. Two ninety nine new release. Go get it. Also on a daily special, I grabbed The Saturday Night at the Lakeside Supper Club by J. Ryan Stradle. I think this is another kind of cozy mystery. It says it's a story of a couple from two very different restaurant families in rustic Minnesota and the legacy of love and tragedy of hardship and hope that unites and divides them. So that actually makes it sound like a little bit more like literary fiction. So maybe it's not cozy mystery. Maybe it's lit fic. Also on special for $1.99, I grabbed Between Friends and Lovers by Shirlene 
Abuobi, I believe is how you pronounce her last name. I'm sorry if I butchered that. But this says, an influencer, an actor, and a writer navigate the messy ins and outs of friendship and romance in a world where social media demands perfection, or at least the appearance of it. In a swoon-worthy swoon love story, perfect for readers of Kennedy Ryan and Carly Fortune. I think, from what I remember, this is like a little love triangle. Also on sale for $1.99 and still at the time of filming is Bone Crier's Moon by Catherine Purdy. That sounds really familiar. I feel like I own something else that Catherine Purdy wrote. I'll have to look it up after this, but it says it's a high stakes fantasy duology flushed with doomed romance and macabre magic. Perfect for fans of Stephanie Garber and Rukshani Chakshki. Bone criers are the last descendants of an ancient famille charged with using the magic they draw from animal bones to shepherd the dead into the afterlife, lest they drain the light from the living. Alessi has been prepared since birth to become their matriarch, but first she must complete her rite of passage to kill the boy she's destined to love. Bastian's father was slain by a bone crier and he's been seeking revenge ever since. Now his vengeance must wait as Alessi's ritual has begun and their fates are entwined in life and in death. Ooh, a little enemies to lovers type deal. On sale for, yet again, $1.99, I grabbed The Glass Spare by Lauren Stefano. It's a new fantasy duology told of lost love and deadly power. It says, Wilhelmina Heidel, the fourth child and the only daughter of the king of the world's wealthiest nation, has grown up in the shadows. Kept hidden from the world in order to serve as a spy for her father, whose obsession with building his empire is causing a war, Wilhelmina wants nothing more than to explore the world beyond her kingdom, if only her father would give her the chance. Until one night, Will is attacked, and she discovers a dangerous secret. Her touch turns people into gemstone. At first, Will is horrified, but as she tests its limits, she's drawn more and more to this strange and volatile volatile ability. When it leads to tragedy, though, Will is forced to face the destructive power within her and finally leave her home to seek the truth and a cure. But finding the key to her redemption puts her in the path of a cursed prince who has his own ideas for what to do with Will's power. With a world on the brink of war and a power of ultimate destruction, can Will find a way to help the kingdom that's turned its back on her, or will she betray her past and her family forever? Really quickly, I'm not going to talk too much about this, but I also grabbed Glass Sword Steel Scars and Queen Song. This is book two and then two novellas in the Red Queen series by Victoria Aveyard. So they went on sale on a daily special and I wanted to scoop them up. Also on sale for $2.99, I grabbed These Burning Stars by Bethany Jacobs. It says it's a dangerous cat and mouse quest for revenge, an empire that spans star systems built on the bones of a genocide, a carefully hidden secret that could collapse worlds, hunted by three women with secrets of their own. It's an explosive space opera debut from one of the most powerful voices in science fiction. So a space opera. So science fiction isn't my favorite uh, well, that's not true. I won't say it's not my favorite genre. It's just a genre that I haven't really branched into much, so I don't gravitate towards it. Maybe it will be once I explore it more, but when I saw this on sale for a couple dollars, I was like, maybe this will be the book that gets me into sci-fi. Harkening back to what I said a little bit ago, I knew I picked up just one damned thing after another. This is book one in the Chronicles of St. Mary's by Jody Taylor. This is the series that predates the Doing Time series I was talking about before. And like I said, these are like cozy mysteries. This was on sale for 99 cents. And I think the rest of them are currently on sale for like $3.99 each. But I just wanted to grab like the first and I think I maybe grabbed the second one as well, just to see if the style was my thing because cozy mystery is a little iffy for me. But it says, meet St. Mary's, a group of tea-soaked disaster magnets who hurdle their way around history. If the whole of history lay before you, where would you go? When Dr. Madeline Maxwell is recruited by the St. Mary's Institute of Historical Research, she discovers the historians there don't just study the past, they revisit it. But one wrong move and history will fight back to the death, and Max soon discovers it's not just history she's fighting. Time travel, cozy mystery for 99 cents. You can't go wrong. I also picked up The Celebrants by Stephen Rowley. I actually spotted this in Barnes & Noble one day and kind of read the back and decided it wasn't something that I thought I really felt strongly about needing a physical copy taking up space on my shelves. But when it went on daily special for the Kindle, I grabbed it. It says, it's been a minute or five years since Jordan Vargas last saw his college friends and 28 years since their graduation from Berkeley when their adult lives officially began. Now Jordan, Jordy, Naomi, Craig, and Mariel find themselves at the brink of a new decade with all the responsibilities of adulthood, yet no closer to having their lives figured out, though not for lack of trying. Over the years, they've reunited in Big Sur to honor a decades-old pack to throw each other living funeral celebrations to remind themselves that life is worth living, that their lives mean something to one another, if not to themselves. That is very dark. 
I don't want to celebrate funerals of my friends. That is not fun. But this reunion is different. They're not gathered as they were to bolster Marielle as her marriage crumbled, to lift Naomi after her parents died, or to intervene when Craig pleaded guilty to art fraud. This time, Jordan is sitting on a secret that will upend their pact. Another $1.99 sale. I grabbed Nine Lives by Peter Swanson. This is the same author who wrote, what is it, like a kind worth killing or something like that. He has a really big following. So I saw this on sale and said, I'm going to grab it. It says it's a heart pounding story of nine strangers who receive a cryptic list with their names on it and then begin to die in highly unusual circumstances. I know Peter Swanson is a really respected thriller writer, so maybe he'll change my mind on the genre. I also picked up Killing Kennedy by Bill O'Reilly and Martin Dugard. I've really liked the Killing series. I've read a couple of them. I think the last one I read was Killing the SS. It was the World War II story, and I really, really like them. So this one on sale for like $2, and I grabbed it. Also a book I've had my eyes on for a really long time is Mary Jane by Jessica Anya Blau. This is still on sale for $1.99 and I know it's very well loved. This is about a 14 year old girl's coming of age in 1970s Baltimore caught between her straight laced family and the progressive family she nannies for who happens to be secretly hiding a famous rock star and his movie star wife for the summer. Okay, this next book is just silly, but it's on sale for 99 cents and it made me laugh, so I grabbed it. That is Kindling by Bonnie Woods, and listen to the way it's described. It says, it's a spicy, grumpy, sunshine, lumberjack, romantic comedy set in Scottish autumn. Do you need to know anything else for 99 cents? Also on sale for $2.99, I grabbed My Favorite Color Is Your Something Blue by Eva Austin. It says it's a sweet YA romance, a fun, lighthearted, and sweet romance for teens or anyone. I don't know, YA romance hasn't necessarily always hit for me because at almost 37 years old, I feel like I'm kind of like out of the high school, silly decision, drama, hormonal nonsense kind of thing, but this seemed pretty cute and for $2, I was like, okay. I also picked up Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong when it went on sale. I think it was like $3.99, I think, or something like that. I do own not only the Fairy Loot version, I believe, but also the Barnes & Noble version. And I have read one of her books before and gave it like a 3.5, 3.75 stars. But this intrigues me. It's an epic adult fantasy inspired by Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra. And that's what kind of has me a little bit like on the fence about it because I found that I'm not loving Shakespeare retellings. I read These Violent Delights and I also read One for My Enemy and neither of them kind of did that much for me, although I appreciated the work that was put into them. So maybe this one will hit. Next up, I grabbed Chlorine by Jade Song. This is currently $12.99, but I picked it up when it was $1.99. Watch your daily specials. So, and actually, you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant. Um, what I would strongly suggest you do is create a list on Amazon that's called like books I want to read or something like that, or even like watch the daily specials list and add every book that you're interested in to that list. And then what you can do every day, instead of having to try to filter through the millions of books on Amazon, if you go and just check that list, it will tell you which of the books are on sale. So you can just scroll right down and see if any of your books have been reduced since you added it to the list. So that's a little tip from me to you. Message me on Instagram if you're confused and I can like talk you through it. But this was a classic example of me scrolling through my books I want to read list and seeing that this book went on sale from 13 bucks to two bucks and quicking so fast. So it says it's a book that blurs the line between a literary coming of age narrative and a dark unsettling horror tale told from an adult perspective on the trials and tribulations of growing up in a society that puts pressure on young women and their bodies. It says, Ren Yu is a swimmer. Her daily life starts and ends with the pool. Her teammates are her only friends. Her coach is her guiding light. If she swims well enough, she will be scouted, get a scholarship, go to a good school. Her parents will love her. Her coach will be kind to her. She will have a good life. But these are human concerns. These are the concerns of those confined to land, those with legs. Ren grew up on the stories of creatures of the deep, of the oceans and the rivers, creatures that called the sailors to their doom, that dragged them down and drowned them, that feasted on their flesh the creature that she always longed to become, the mermaid. Ren aches to be in the water. She dreams of the scent of chlorine, the feel of it on her skin, and she will do anything she can to make a life for herself where she can be free no matter the pain, no matter what anyone else thinks, no matter how much blood she has to spill. Weird, gothic, horror, merm like evil mermaid tale. Like, I'm into it. So 
put it on your list, wait for it to go back on sale because it might go back on sale for $1.99 again, and that is a really great grab. A book I actually paid full price for um, because I, I reached my Kindle rewards level limit. So like I had a $3 coupon. Whenever I get a $3 coupon, I use it for a regularly priced book. So I had three bucks and I grabbed an Academy for Liars by Alexis Henderson. It says a student will find that the hardest lessons sometimes come from outside the classroom in this stunning dark academia novel. So I've been really into dark academia lately. And I honestly think it's just because it's fall time and like, to me, for some reason, that's dark academia time, like fall, winter vibes. I don't know why. So I grabbed it. It says, Lennon Carter's life is falling apart. Then she gets a mysterious phone call inviting her to take the entrance exam for Drayton College, a school of magic hidden in a secret pocket of Savannah, Georgia. Lennon has been chosen because, like everyone else at the school, she has the innate gift of persuasion, the ability to wield her will like a weapon, using it to control others, and in rare cases, matter itself. After passing the test, Lennon begins to learn how to master her devastating and unsettling power. But despite persuasion's heavy toll on her body and mind, she is wholly captivated by her studies, by Drayton's lush, moss-draped campus, and by her brilliant classmates. But even more captivating is her charismatic advisor, Dante, who both intimidates and enthralls her. As Lennon continues in her studies, her control grows and she starts to uncover more about the secret world she has entered into, including the disquieting history of Drayton College. She is increasingly disturbed by what she learns, for it seems that the ultimate test is to embrace absolute power without succumbing to corruption, and it's a test she's terrified she's going to fail. Worth it. I also picked up Beneath These Cursed Stars by Lexi Ryan. Lexi Ryan also wrote these, the These Hollow Vows. I believe it's a duology, if not a trilogy. And this is the next installment. It says it's a new romantic fantasy set in the same enchanting world of These Hollow Vows. When a human princess armed with death's kiss allies with a fae shifter on the run, their mission to assassinate an evil king collides with a fatal prophecy. Okay, so this next one, I was actually lucky enough to be given the Ark of the Lost Kings by Elizabeth Kreif. She was sweet enough to send this over to me, but this is book two in the Wings of Alenia series, so I wanted to make sure I grabbed book one, which is called The Swan Harp by Elizabeth Kreif. It said it's an enthralling, suspenseful, and ma <laughs> enthralling, suspenseful, and magical first book. It says, I was father's heir now, and one day I'd be queen. But when I looked at mother, Adana, and Arla, and imagined flying, somehow the thought of being queen didn't comfort me. As next in line to the throne, Kiar will be responsible for protecting the human kingdom of Alenia, the middle of three daughters of King Tyr and Queen Tianis, a woman of the swan folk. Kiar is devastated when her sisters are able to take swan form, and she is not. When three young swan folk arrive to be fostered in the royal family, her friendship with spirited Willow and growing feelings for tall, thoughtful Tuan, T-U-A-N, will make her feel even more different. Her inability to change shape is not the only problem Kiar faces. The king of neighboring, the king of neighboring Normark. They never make these fantasy books easy for us to read. <laughs> is determined to bring Valenia under his rule, either by force or by guile. He sends his son to ask for her hand in marriage. Facing down a human enemy is one thing, but when dark magic threatens the kingdom and tragedy pulls the family apart, it's up to Kiar and her swan folk friends to defeat the supernatural forces before Valenia falls. Thank you, Elizabeth, for sending over book two. I definitely wanted to make sure I supported you in purchasing book one, which is the swan harp, and I'm so excited to get into it. I am so excited for this nonfiction. It was on sale for, I believe, 99 cents, and I scooped it up. This is An Order to Live, A North Korean Girl's Journey to Your Freedom. This is by Yoonmi Park, who I do follow on Instagram. If you don't, she is absolutely fascinating. She grew up in North Korea and was able to escape with her life and tells the story and the cautionary tales of North Korea and what it was like living in that horrible regime. So I wanted to make sure I picked up her um, memoir and her biography. And I am so excited to read it because I find her gorgeous and inspirational and eloquent and just fascinating in general. And I love to listen to her speak. I love listening to her lecture series. You can look them up on YouTube. And I just find her fascinating. So I definitely can't wait to read her story. Just for a little peek of it, it says... Yinmi Park shines a light not just into the darkest corners of life in North Korea, describing the deprivation and deception she endured and which millions of North Korean people continue to endure to this day, but also onto her most painful and difficult memories. She tells with bravery and dignity for the first time the story of how she and her mother were betrayed and sold into a word I can't say on YouTube, slavery. Um in China and forced to suffer terrible psychological and physical hardship before they finally made their way to Seoul, South Korea and to freedom. 
Today, she is a human rights activist working determinedly to bring attention to the oppression taking place in her home country. Her testimony is heartbreaking and unimaginable, but never without hope. This is human spirit at its most indomitable. I'm so excited for this. Also on sale, I grabbed Black Sheep by Rachel Harrison. It says it's a cynical 20-something must confront her unconventional family's dark secrets. Nobody has a normal family, but Vester, Vesper Wrights is truly something else. Vesper left home at 18 and never looked back, mostly because she was told that leaving the staunchly religious community she grew up in meant she couldn't return. So it sounds like she grew up in a cult and she was going to be excommunicated. But then an envelope arrives on her doorstep. Inside is an invitation to the wedding of Vesper's beloved cousin, Rosie. It's to be hosted at the family farm. Have they made an exception to the rule? It wouldn't be the first time Vesper has been given special treatment. Is the invite a sweet gesture, an olive branch, a trap? Doesn't matter. Something insists... Something inside her insists she goes to the wedding, even if it means returning to the toxic environment she escaped, even if it means reuniting with her mother Constance, a former horror film star and forever ice queen. When Vesper's homecoming exhumes a terrifying secret, she's forced to reckon with her family's beliefs and her own crisis of faith in this deliciously sinister novel that explores the way family ties can bind us as we struggle to find our place in the world. I believe Rachel Harrison also, isn't this the author of So Thirsty? She does horror novels, I believe. So I think this has a horror element. I also grabbed The Rhino Keeper by Gillian Forsberg. It says it's based on the true story of a Dutch sea captain who traveled with an Indian rhinoceros called Clara across 18th century Europe. 2022, college student Andrea Clarkson uncovers a historical mystery while studying abroad in Holland. From hidden desk drawers comes unusual historical documents featuring a rhinoceros. On a lichen-covered 18th century grave, the same animal is carved. When an expanding river forces exhumation, when she finds buried there is life-changing. Andrea faces her nightmares to retrieve what a grave robber steals, valuable proof of a long-forgotten history. It sounds very good. Also on special, I grabbed Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed. This is the same author as The Wolf and the Woodsman. It says this is a book where a young witch seeks to discover her identity and escape the domination and escape the domination of her abusive wizard father. I also grabbed The Sky on Fire by Jen Lyons. I believe this was another case where I had a $3 coupon because I don't think this one has gone on sale yet. It says, it's a daring new fantasy heist adventure that will thrill fans of Fourth Wing. That's what got me. It says, Anna Rod lives only for survival, forging her own way through the harsh jungles of the deep with her Titan Drake by her side. Even when an adventuring party saves her from capture by a local warlord, she is eager to return to her solitary life. But this is no ordinary rescue. It's Anna Rod's past catching up with her. These cunning misfits and their frustratingly appealing dragon rider leader intend to spirit her away to the dragon ruled sky cities where they need her help to steal from a dragon's horde. There's only one problem. The horde in question belongs to the current regent, Never Animus, and she wants Anarod dead. You tell me that this is good for fans of Fourth Wing, I'm in. I also grabbed If Something Happens to Me by Alex Finlay. It says it's one of the year's most anticipated thrillers about a summer trip abroad to Italy with law school classmates. So that sounded really good. Okay, this is actually a Kindle Unlimited book. This is King of Country by C.W. Farnsworth. It's Kindle Unlimited, but it went on sale for 99 cents one day, and I grabbed it because that way it won't take up a spot on my KU library little, like, dashboard. It says, Kyle Spencer is the king of country music. She's the city girl sent to talk him into returning to the stage. So I think it's going to be a little one of us is famous country music star, like yeehaw, cowboy type romance. Did school pick up? And I have a new update to our Diet Coke journey. So as you know, and it should be obvious, <clears throat> McDonald's Diet Coke remains the superior Diet Coke, right? Like, obviously, obviously. Um, McDonald's Diet Coke in a Stanley. Where have you been all my life? This is amazing, and this will keep not only your Diet Coke cold for like 15 hours, but it keeps the ice frozen so it doesn't water down your Diet Coke. Stick around. You'll get tons of Diet Coke tips with Lindsay, let me tell you. Okay, next up I grabbed Full Speed to a Crash Landing by Beth Revis. I believe this is another science fiction space opera type of deal. It says, yep, it's a high-octane space heist. And it's a trilogy. 
It says, Ada Lamar may have gotten to the spaceship wreck first, but looters' rights won't get her far when she's got a hole in the side of her ship and her spaceship is her spacesuit is almost out of air. Fortunately for her, help arrives in the form of a government salvage crew, and while they reluctantly rescue her from certain death, they are not pleased to have an unexpected passenger along on their classified mission. But Ada doesn't care. All that matters to her is enjoying their fine food and sweet, sweet oxygen until Ryan White the Ryan White the government agent in charge starts to suspect that there's more to Ada than meets the eye. He's not wrong, but he's so pretty that Ada is perfectly happy to keep him paying attention to her, at least until she can complete the job she was sent to pull off. But as quick as Ada is, Ryan might be quicker, and she may not be entirely sure who's manipulating who until it's too late. Sounds cute. Also on a daily special, it is a Kindle Unlimited book, so purchasing it is not necessary, but went on sale for like $1.99 one day. I grabbed The Bad Ones by Melissa Albert. This says it's a supernatural horror novel about four mysterious disappearances in a town haunted by a sinister magical history. On sale for 99 cents, I grabbed Love Story by Lindsay Kelk. It says it's an enemies to lovers rom-com. I believe it's a brand new release. Okay, September. So it released in September of this year. And it says she's a small town school teacher. He's a hotshot creative director. Together, it's hate at first sight. Okay, another book that I was lucky enough to receive the arc of was Unloved, which is book two in the Undone series, I believe it's called, by Peyton Corinne. So like I said, this is the second book. So I went ahead and I grabbed the first book, which is called Unsteady. It says that this is a romance between a NHL hockey player, I believe, or an NHL aspiring hockey player, and a figure skater who's drowning in debt from custody hearings trying to get custody from her younger brothers. I believe they are college aged. I'm not really sure and I don't want to know, but thank you Peyton for sending me the arc and I can't wait to read the first one. Another $3 off special that I used to get a new release was Novola by Paolo Basha Galupi? Basi Galupi? Bachi Galupi? I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Paolo. Um, it says it's a sweeping literary historical fantasy about the young scion from a ruling class family who faces rebellion as he ascends to power. It says in Novola, a bustling city state dominated by a handful of influential families, business and power is power and power is everything. For generations, the Deregulai family, merchant bankers with a vast empire, has nurtured tendrils that stretch to the farthest reaches of their known world. And though they claim not to be political, their staggering wealth has brought cities and toppled kingdoms. Soon, Devico de Reguli will be expected to take the reins of power from his father and demonstrate his mastery of the games of Novolis diplomacy. Knowing who to trust and who to doubt and how to read what lies behind a smile. But in Nivola, strange and ancient undercurrents lurk behind the guilt and the grandeur like the fossilized dragon eye in the family's possession, a potent symbol of their raw power and a talisman that seems to be summoning DeVico to act. As tensions rise and the events unfold, DeVico will be tested to his limits. His fate depends on the eldritch dragon relic and what lies buried in the heart of his adopted sister, Celia de Belcosi, whose own family was destroyed by Nivola's twisted politics. It sounds excellent. And I had a coupon, so it was worth it. I also picked up A Dreadful Splendor by B.R. Myers. This is a book I've never seen anybody talk about, but it says it's a whimsical, whimsical gothic murder mystery brimming with romance betrayals and chills. A fake spiritualist is summoned to hold a seance for a bride who died on the eve before her wedding, but as nefarious secrets are revealed, the line between hoax and haunting blurs. This next book is currently still on sale for 99 cents, and it says it's Gilmore Girls Meets Charmed. That is Impractical Magic by Emily Grimoire. Grimoire, I believe. It says it's a cozy, small town, second chance romance. It says, in Oak Haven, this witch is about to brew up more trouble than she bargained for. When Scarlet Melrose receives a call from her estranged sisters, she immediately knows something is wrong. The magic at their mother's inn, and in fact the whole of Oak Haven, has gone awry, and they need her help to save it. As the conflicted middle child, returning home has given Scarlet the heebie-jeebies, and to make matters worse, she's just come face to face with charming old flame and handyman Nate. When her spell to fix the magic goes horribly wrong, all Scarlet wants to do is flee back to the peace and quiet of her San Francisco flat, but she can't keep running away forever, and she'll need all the help she can to solve this magical mess. With time slipping away, Scarlet must learn that sometimes the greatest spells really do come with the greatest responsibility especially when love is involved. Gilmore Girls meets Charmed. I'm in. 
I also grabbed The Unwedding by Ali Condi. This was a Reese's Book Club pick. And it says it's about a wedding at a gorgeous resort in Big Sur, but everything begins to fall apart when the main character, Ellery, discovers a dead body the morning of the ceremony. Okay, quite possibly my second favorite find of the entire haul is Chasing Shadows by Greg Skomel. I have been eyeing this book for so long, but it was like $17.99 at one point for the Kindle version, which I just couldn't bring myself to do. And one day I was scrolling through my list of books and it was on sale for $1.99. I was so excited because this is something I'm very passionate about. My favorite animal in the entire world is a great white shark. I'm obsessed with them. And where we go in Cape Cod is actually the great white shark capital of the Northeast. I love them. And Mr. Greg Skomel, Dr. Greg Skomel, runs the Osarch for the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy, and he works out of Chatham, Massachusetts, so he's often up there tagging great whites, like right where my dad's place is, and I'm fascinated by him, and I'm fascinated by great whites. So this is his book. It says, it's the story of tracking the ocean's most charismatic and controversial predator, compellingly told by the man who has learned more about the Atlantic great white shark than any other person alive. It says Dr. Greg Skomel, one of the leading great white shark experts in the country, reveals the true nature of these mysterious apex predators, as well as the fascinating story behind their history and startling resurgency. With its quaint villages, local restaurants serving up lobster rolls and miles and miles of warm sandy beaches, Cape Cod, Massachusetts is famous for being America's carefree seaside getaway. But in August of 2012, the first confirmed white shark attack white shark attack in almost 80 years occurred in the region. As shark sightings quickly began to increase on Cape Cod and elsewhere, and large beachside billboards warning about the growing shark population between a became a common sight, a boogie boarder died after being attacked by a great white shark in Cape Cod's shallow waters. What had changed to cause news of human shark interactions to go from being a rarity to being the new normal? As some citizens called for shark calls, nets, drone surveillance, and other extreme solutions, interactions between local residents and scientists, politicians, and those were responsible for public safety became tense and frantic. Dr. Greg Skomel, a shark biologist whose lifelong passion has been to gain a more refined understanding of great white sharks, was at the center of it all. I remember when that attack happened because it was literally like three miles down beach from our area. Um, and it was just so, I mean, people in Cape Cod have great white shark interactions literally all the time. Like in the summer, it's not necessarily uncommon at all because the, um, national shores of Cape Cod are nationally protected and the dunes are protected, you are also not allowed to hunt for seal. So as the seal population comes back, obviously the sharks follow the seals. It's their food source. So there's a lot of great white sharks in Cape Cod, but it's typically not a problem. And Greg Skomel has been fascinating to me forever. If you happen to watch Shark Week on Discovery Channel, you will often see him because he does a lot of specials with them. So when this book went on sale for $1.99, I was... I don't think I've ever clicked faster. I also grabbed A Duel with the Vampire Lord by Elise Kova. This is Kindle Unlimited, so totally unnecessary, but went on sale for like a dollar, so I grabbed it. It says, step into a world of hunters, vampires, and curses that run deeper than blood in this standalone fantasy romance. I also grabbed The God and the Gumiho by Sophie Kim. I have seen so many booktubers talking about this book, and I'm very intrigued by it because most of them have really loved it. It says, Kim Hani has retired from a life of devouring souls. She has simply put, to fall. Once known as the infamous Scarlet Fox, she now spends her days working in a coffee shop and annoying a particularly irritating, if unfairly handsome, trickster god as often as she can. That god is Sukka? Sukka the Fallen, exiled from the heavenly kingdom of Okwang. Once again, if I am butchering these names, I am so sorry. He now begrudgingly resides in the mortal realm, working towards his redemption and suffering through his interactions with the particularly infuriating, if sneakily charming, Gumiho Barista at his favorite cafe. But when a powerful demon escapes from the underworld and threatens to end all of humanity, Okwang's empire offers Sukka an enticing bargain. Kill this rogue creature, as well as the legendary and elusive Scarlet Fox, and he will be reinstated as a god. That sounds so cute. I'm not going to talk too long about this, but I have been keeping my eye on A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin, one of my hands-down favorite shows that has ever been on television, and I've really wanted to read the series, but I am so deeply intimidated by it. And it went on sale for $1.99 one day, so I grabbed the first book, but... Don't get excited because I will not be picking this up for a very long time because it's scary. 
Yet another author I've been really wanting to get into is Terry Brooks and one day Child of Light which is book one in the Viridian Deep series went on sale and I scooped it up. I hope I like it because she does so many books. It says it's a new fantasy series from the legendary author. It says at 19 Oris Afton Grieg has led an unusual life. Since the age of 14 she has been trapped in a goblin prison. Why? She does not know. She has no memories of her past beyond the vaguest of impressions. All she knows is that she is about to age out of the children's prison, and rumors say that the adult version is far, far worse. So she and some friends stage a desperate escape into the surrounding wastelands, and it is here that Oris's journey of discovery begins, for she is rescued by a handsome yet alien stranger. Harrow claims to be a fae, a member of a magical race that Oris has thought to be no more than legend. Odder still, he seems to think that she is fae as well, although the two look nothing alike. But strangest of all, when he brings her to his wondrous homeland, she begins to suspect that he is right. Yet how could a woman who looks entirely human be a magical being herself? Sounds so good. And there are people, Terry Brooks has like a cult following. There are people who love her, so I can't wait to get into it. Fun fact, I just accidentally happened, it was a happy accident now, but I happened to scroll down and I saw the about the author. Terry Brooks is a man. I did not know that. I thought Terry Brooks, I could have sworn I saw a picture of a blonde woman. I thought she, but I guess not. So he, he has a cult following. I also grabbed Husbands and Lovers by Beatrice Williams. It says it's about two women separated by decades and continents, united by an exotic family heirloom, reclaim secrets and lost loves. I also scooped up Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Mellers when it went on sale for like $2.99 one day. This book has another one that has like a cult following. I believe this is, is it student teacher? I don't know. Let's find out. It says, 24-year-old British painter Cleo has escaped from England to New York and is still finding her place in the sleepless city when, a few months before her student visa ends, she meets Frank. 20 years older and a self-made success, Frank's life is full of all the excesses Cleo's lacks. He offers her the chance to be happy, the freedom to paint, and the opportunity to apply for a green card. But their impulsive marriage irreversibly changes both their lives and the lives of those close to them in ways they could have never predicted. So I know this is like more, it sounds like a romance, but I think it's like a literary fiction. I believe it's also fairly sad, but people love it. I can't wait to read it. Yet another $3 coupon, and I grabbed We Used to Live Here by Marcus Klewer. This is a horror novel. I've heard it's not too scary, but I know it's about a couple that purchase a home, and then one day they're at the house and there's a knock on the door, and it's these people saying that they used to live in the home, and they asked to be let in for like nostalgic like sentimental reasons and for whatever silly reason the new homeowners let them in and then creepy things start happening. Okay yet another one I'm not going to go too far into and it is Kindle Unlimited is No Place to Hide by Harper Ashley. This was actually a recommendation from I believe Dana and Karina told me that they really like this. It's super smutty super dirty little novella and it's Kindle Unlimited but it went on sale for 99 cents and I grabbed it. Yet another Kindle Unlimited book that I picked up is A Match Made in Hell. It's a steamy enemies to lovers paranormal romance. It's bound to the vampires book one. There's currently three. And it says a dangerous mission forces me to team up with my worst enemies, three seductive vampires. So I'm pretty sure this is like a reverse harem with vampires. And I actually got this as a recommendation from a friend of mine who loves this book. I also picked up books one through three in the Rogue X Aura series. The first book is The Last Storm by J.D. Linton. It says, hidden in the shadow of her controlling father, Evander of Orina, Era has never tasted Aura has never tasted true freedom. For most of her life, she's been locked away in his estate as he is determined to protect her from the bloodthirsty fae across the border. But as her 26th birthday comes and goes, he decides it's time for her to marry against her wishes and completely unbeknownst to her. Ara's fate is sealed the moment he announces her engagement. Rogue Drakai's entire life has been a painful truth. Raised at the hands of his father, the merciless king of Ravarin, Rogue has never tasted an ounce of kindness. Now that his father is dead, the crown has been thrust upon him, and it is his responsibility to save his people from the wrath of Arena. It is for that reason he crosses the border into Arena to spy on the court in the capital for secrets, leverage, anything. Rogue's fate is sealed the moment he lays eyes on Ara Starin. So, Romantic, fae, court politics, that's all the things I love. 
Not going to give you synopses of all three of these, but I grabbed Business or Pleasure, Weather Girl, and The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This is a book that I've really wanted to get into and an author I've really wanted to get into. So when all three of these were on sale, I think these were a bit more expensive. I think they were between like $4.99 and $6.99, but they're normally like $14. So I grabbed them. I also grabbed One Star Romance by Laura Henkin when it went on sale for $4.99. It's normally, and right now, it's on sale for $12.99, so I figured that was a pretty good deal. It says, a struggling writer is forced to walk down the aisle at her best friend's wedding with the man who gave her book a very public one-star rating in this fresh romantic comedy. Another little novella I grabbed was Games We Play. It says it's the One Night Series book one of six by Dana Isali. This is only 90 pages, but it was also highly recommended to me. And it says Jack is a faceless gamer known as the Joker. He makes a living playing video games and uses his gravelly voice to bring people's fantasies to life. When the top gaming site on the West Coast sends someone over to interview him, Quinlan walks in with her auburn curls and thick curves and they're instantly drawn to each other. Okay. Quite possibly another one of the best deals I found was the Selection Series 5 book collection. Now, right now, this is on sale for $49.99 for all five of the Kindle books, which puts them at about $10 a piece. I got the entire five book collection for $3.99. That is so insane that I got five books for $4. The Kindle book the daily deals is absolutely the way to go. I couldn't recommend it more. So for anyone who wants to build up their collection or who wants to read more but you're on a budget or who are just like me who don't like to spend more money than is necessary, Kindle daily deals. You have to be looking into them. Okay, and last but certainly not least, I picked up Suburban Hell by Maureen Kilmer. This was on sale for $1.99 one day. It's normally six bucks, so I picked it up. It says a Chicago cul-de-sac is about to get a new neighbor of the demonic kind. Amy Foster considers herself lucky. After she left the city and moved to the suburbs, she found her place quickly with neighbors Liz, Jess, and Melissa snarking together from the outskirts of the PTA crowd. One night during their monthly wine get-together, the crew concoct a plan for a clubhouse she shed and Liz's backyard, a space for just them, no spouses or kids allowed. But the night after they christened the she shed, things start to feel off. They didn't expect Liz's little home improvement project to release a demonic force that turns their quiet enclave into something out of a nightmare. And that's before the homeowners association gets wind of it. Even the calmest moms can't justify the strange burn marks, self-moving dolls, and horrible smells surrounding their possessed friend Liz. <laughs> their friend gets possessed? That could certainly ruin a wine night. <laughs> Together, Amy, Jess, and Melissa must fight the evil spirit to save Liz and the neighborhood before the suburbs go completely to hell. Like I said, those aren't the only books I got. There's literally like four or five other pages like mingling in between those that were just silly little books I picked up or were books that were free on Stuff Your Kindle Days and I'm not going to go through all of them, but those are the books I'm most excited about or that I feel like could potentially be good recommendations for the future. Comment below which ones you've read and if they were good choices or which ones you've read and you didn't care for and why. Make sure you tell me why you didn't care for them. And then if you've made it this entire way, comment the cloud emoji because why not i feel like it and it's a cute little emoji so comment the cloud emoji and then do all the things you guys are so perfect at doing like comment subscribe and i will catch you in the next one bye guys mm -hmm.